Hi, you beautiful souls, and welcome back to Catching Waves Yoga with me, Leslie. Um, but today we're not going to do yoga. Today we are going to talk about where I am in my healing journey because I know it's been quite a while. I think it's been at least a year, maybe a year and a half since the last video that I gave you guys, and I've had a great response from it too. I've had so many people across the world, which blows my mind. Um, reach out to me and just share their story, share their gratitude for finding my story and finding that inspiration that they needed when they felt completely lost. Um, so I thought it was important to make another video because I have come so far from that point. And at that point, I was still, you know, I was doing mostly okay, but I was still going in and out of flare ups, uh, not frequently. Um, and the pain wasn't nearly what it was, you know, at the onset of the TOS, but where I'm at now, I'm to a point where I can use the rowing machine almost every single day. I can go kayaking with my husband. I can go paddle boarding with my husband. I can go out on my rollerblades and walk my dog and do this <laughs> without thinking about having TOS and being in pain. And I think it's really important for you guys to remember it takes time to heal. It's been a three year, if not more journey from the very beginning of this, which that's just when the like huge symptoms started to where I'm at now. So I always want to start with that. It's going to take time. I'm 33 years old. I was about 29, 30 when all of this stuff started happening to me. And at that point I had 30 years of whatever my body was used to, whether it was, you know, habitual slumping or specific things that I was always carrying on one side, there was these habits and patterns in my life that have been part of the routine. And in three years, I've had to break them and to retrain my body, to retrain my mind and retrain so many things in order to get to a spot of healing. So just keep that in mind. It's not going to happen overnight. And there's going to be lots of moments on the journey that you, you fall back. You know, there was so many times that I was doing an exercise or something, whether it was strengthening or stretching, that then I would cause myself to go into a flare up. And, you know, it's always really frustrating when you are doing so good and you've went several weeks, maybe even months without an inkling of a burning or a numbness or being able to even sleep on your side at night, you know, and then all of a sudden you go into a flare up and you just, all of those negative toxic thoughts slip right back in of, you know, why am I doing this? What is the point? I'm never going to get better. And these are those things that stay in your mind and then stop you from continuing to move forward. So know that setbacks are gonna happen. They've happened to me constantly, even this year. Um, you know, early in the spring, right now we're in the summer, early in the spring when I was just raking and doing yard work, I probably had the worst nerve pain I've ever experienced and it was in both of my arms at that point. Um, I know in my other video I told you guys it was uh, diagnosed on my right side at some point there was some bilateral um, symptoms uh, that kind of comes and goes but I would say it's definitely not permanent but in the spring I had where both of my arms went completely they were numb they were they were just limp um, and they had the nerve pain shooting up and down and it was the most uncomfortable thing I have experienced and like I said you know in the other one I could hardly use my right arm so now, keeping that in mind, that was in the spring and it happened and it went away within less than 24 hours. In the past, I would have had a flare up and it would have set me back easily a month, if not longer, where I would have to completely stop doing any type of working out, um, anything like I wouldn't have been able to go paddle boarding or kayaking or anything like that. So it's important to notice, yes, even in my journey, I'm still having some stuff. But again, I'm only three years into this of the retraining. But I'm finally to a spot where I'm doing really, really well. Um, I do want to mention there is a couple things that had come up this last year that have added to my story that go a little bit beyond uh, thoracic outlet syndrome. So there is this one thing called costochondritis. I might be saying that wrong. It might be costochondritis. I'm not 100% sure. 
Um, but at one point I was, I'm a teacher, I'm an art teacher. If you didn't know that, surprise, <laughs> that's a painting of mine back there. Um, there was one day at school that I was basically doubled over and it felt like I was having a heart attack and I couldn't catch my breath. And this didn't go on beyond 10 seconds. And in the back of my mind, I was like, it's not my heart. I'm quite certain it's a muscle thing. Um, and I was right. And so it turned out to be costochondritis, but every single symptom of costo can very much seem like you're having a heart attack. So of course I did go to my doctor and get everything checked out and all the results were just fine. Um, just like I had suspected, but it's always best to make sure that you rule out, you know, a bigger issue than whatever. So, um, so with that, what I have learned is I have think of it as like tendonitis where you have inflammation in those tendons where your bones are attaching, your muscles are attaching. So I more or less kind of have like tendonitis in the ribs and essentially right where your sternum and your rib cage connect, you have cartilage and that can become inflamed or over mobilized because your ribs in the back wall are stuck and stiff. And so I'm pretty certain I've had this all along. I just always assumed that any rib pain was just TOS. And so I'd never looked into it any further. So obviously when I had this, like what seemed like a heart attack, I was like, ah, oh, this seems a little different than TOS. Um, and it was. So now knowing that, um, it really hasn't changed a lot of the protocol that I do. I kind of treat it all as one. I need to make sure that my ribs and body are moving freely and fluidly and that I don't have, you know, swelling and inflammation. So this is the collarbone in the old video that you could see and you can tell even now it's a little more swollen. I think that's just kind of chronically what it looks like now. So this is my normal state. I have no pain, no numbness, no burning, no sensation at all in my chest, in my arms, nothing. No tension even in my neck. And I will tell you another reason why I have no tension in my neck in just a moment. Um, but what I think is important for you guys to know is you saw in my older video how swollen my collarbone was when I was in some of those really bad flare-ups and I'm sure you guys have experienced it too. They do go away. They do come back. Um, for me, sorry if there are guys here, but for me, every time I get close to my cycle during the month, I definitely have more inflammation in my body and that's when I have more pain. Now, does that mean I have a flare-up? Absolutely not. I just feel a little more tension kind of all over in my body and I just know I need to take it easy on those days and make sure I'm hydrated, make sure I'm stretching. So what am I doing now to maintain myself? Not a lot, which is great, right? Because when I first started, it was like I am stretching every single minute of my day and I am doing yoga and I'm doing the melt method and I'm doing all these things, trigger point therapy, you know, whatever it was. I'm only now doing yoga and the melt method. That is it. I have really reduced it to those two things and I've honestly found that the melt method, I could probably do that without yoga, even though yoga is obviously beneficial because you are stretching and lengthening and strengthening all at the same time, where the melt method, if you don't know much about it, it's a system that involves using a foam roller and bands. I particularly just focus on the foam roller. And it's a very soft foam roller that is meant to interact with your fascial system, which is very superficial. So like when you even just rub your arm or rub your chest, you're working the fascia and the lymphatic system. So by using this very soft foam roller in a very specific way that Sue, who is the inventor, Sue Hitzman, um, she has created this protocol that you are literally moving the fascial fluid through your entire body. You're working the lymphatic drainage system to get all of that stuck stuff out. That's where your toxins end up building up and we don't need those. And then also you are creating new neural pathways for your muscles and your brain to kind of go back into the way that they're supposed to. So I highly, 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 like I, <laughs> I am not getting paid for this at all, but I highly recommend everyone and anyone, pain or no pain, to get the melt method because it just truly restores your body. Um, for me, the, the maps, that's what she calls them, they're maps, which is like, think of a yoga class, like one whole class would be like, a map. So the different maps that I have done, um, there is one where it's like you lay on the roller and I think it's called the full body rebalance. 
um, you do that one and it just first helps reconnect your spine and the nervous system to your brain. And it allows your brain to say, okay, I don't need to be in flight or flight, flight or fight mode. And all of a sudden your, your whole systemic body is going to relax a little bit. Um, I really like the neck one. There's one where you can just really get into the deep neck muscles to release from behind the ear, right at the cervical spine. And then my absolute favorite that I pretty much have memorized at this point, it's called the swim map. Now, I'm not a swimmer at all. I mean, I like swimming, but I'm not a professional. But all of those muscles in your thoracic spine come back to what a swimmer would use. So when you're using this one, you are rolling through your upper back, you're rolling out your arms, you're working on your chest, you're working on your neck. Um, and I found that just doing that one over and over and over, and sometimes I would do it twice a day. I don't have to do it twice a day now, but just doing that one over and over was giving me huge, huge relief. And then I finally was like, okay, I'll do the swim map and I'll add in a lower body because everything is truly connected. And if your hips are tight, well, maybe it's not really your hips, but it could be something in your abs or even something in your shoulder because those fascia lines run on a diagonal from shoulder to hip, right? And so wherever you're having that stuckness, the pain might appear somewhere else. So I want you to just keep that in mind. Everything is connected everything is connected. So even though we will do a lot of local kind of specific treatments, it's better to keep in mind to work the whole body because you might have something in your ankle that is then systemically creating change or an imbalance in your upper body. So anyways, um, I'm obsessed with the melt method. If you follow me on my Instagram, lroberts1121, um, you will see that I talk about it all the time. Um, and truly, it has helped get my life back into the spot that I really needed to be. Um, and I don't think it's something that I'm ever going to give up. It is 100% worth the investment to get the roller. I know that there are tons of like soft foam rollers, but I don't know, just what Sue has created is one that you know, doesn't have all like the, the toxic stuff within the plastic of the roller and whatever. So, and I would much rather support an individual versus some big company in a foreign country that I'm really unaware of. Um, so, not method and yoga. Those are my two things. That is what I stick with. And that's what I come back to anytime my body starts to feel a little off. Or if I notice that I'm stressed, I use those two modalities to really bring me back to a spot where I know that it's something tried and true that is going to work and will continue with my health. Um, in addition to that, this earlier in the year, COVID has really messed up with my brain on time-wise, but let's say it was November of 2020. So right now we are in August of 2021. Um, I had some pretty severe gastrointestinal issues that caused me to go into the hospital. No, it wasn't COVID. Um, I've been negative the whole time, thank God. Um, or think whoever you believe in. Um, but what I had learned, it was nothing. All the tests were like, oh, you're healthy, you're normal. But I'm like, but I'm really not. I've got something internally going on. And so um, more or less what I have done was I found the low FODMAP diet. And it's low FODMAP are just these foods that have been researched that will cause gastrointestinal gastrointestinal issues in individuals. And you know, they're healthy foods like apple and garlic and onion and mangoes and the list goes on. Um, so they're healthy things, but when you have too many high FODMAP things in one specific setting, meal through the day, um, you can just have too much uh, stress on your system. And so I did what's called the elimination diet using the low FODMAP and I've you know, learned that I'm sensitive to gluten. I don't have an allergy. I've had all of my food allergy testing and I have no allergens, but I'm sensitive to gluten. I'm also sensitive to garlic and onion, which is so sad because I love them. Um, but that doesn't mean I have to completely get rid of them. It just means I can't have garlic and onion in breakfast, lunch, and dinner and my snacks. Um, but I could have it in just dinner or just my lunch. And as long as everything else is kind of neutral throughout the day, it doesn't mean the food tastes bad. It just means I'm being mindful of high FODMAP foods versus low FODMAP foods that are going into my body. Um, and since I've been doing that, I've been... <laughs> 
so healthy. I have, like I said, I, I now am rowing every single day on our row machine and I really contribute that both to getting the TOS in under control and then also maintaining my diet. And then exercise is just that last little thing when you're finally feeling good, you need a true kind of cardio exercise and then eventually weightlifting um, to get the blood flow going. It will make sure that you're not constipated, right? Because if you're constipated, and oh, we're gonna talk about poop for a second, everyone, talk, everyone poops, so why not? Um, when you're constipated and you're not pooping, all of those like testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, all of those things are stored in your poop and they're supposed to be eliminated. And so when you're not pooping regularly, those things are getting reabsorbed in your bowels and then what's happening to your body? Nothing good. So um, I'm sure that was what was happening back in November for me when all these things were a mess and my cycle was irregular, ladies. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Um, so again, getting food on track, making sure you're eating tons and tons of fruits and vegetables. I'm not advocating for any one specific diet. Do You do you, but get some whole foods in there. Get fiber through natural sources. And if you know you're not getting enough, get a really good fiber supplement. Um, I have one that I love. I think it's by Dr. Don Colbert. And it's like a psyllium husk powder that also has uh, insulin added into it just to make sure that you don't have any crashes in your system throughout the day. Um, so I really like that one. And I will, I can link it, you know, down there. Um, so anyways, making sure that you are exercising because when you're exercising and you're getting that blood flow, you are also making sure that your intestinal tract is getting cleared out through that whole process as well. So um, my kind of goal for myself to continue this health and healing is obviously continue with yoga, continue with the melt method because I love it. I'm obsessed. Um, and then just keep listening to my body and adding in things that I know are going to support me. So right now I'm just doing rowing. It's a full body workout other than a couple aspects of maybe the front. It's a very, it's a pull workout, not a push kind of workout. Uh, if my camera moves, it's because <laughs> Lenny decided to come say hi. Um, and so rowing is amazing for me in addition to yoga and with yoga I'm doing the chaturanga and so that's strengthening that's giving me that kind of push that I need when I'm getting the, all the pulling action on the back side of my body from rowing and I know you're like what did she just say so I can if you want to know just send me a message and we can talk more about that specifically um uh, the other thing that I do really want to hit on is mindset and I know I said it last time mindset is going to be your best friend. I know even there right now, it's really hard because you're like, nothing is working and everything sucks and I'm in pain and I'm never going to be out of pain. And I've been there. You guys, I have heard the thoughts. My brain has said them to me too. And I will say you can get through this. Um, before I continue with that, I just want to remind you that I was really early in discovering that I had TOS. Um, I know that there are some of you who might be kind of in those later stages where maybe you do have permanent nerve damage. And I'm truly sorry that you are at that spot. And I can't speak in that experience. Um, but I can say when you do catch it early on, there are a lot of preventative things that you can do to restore your body, to change those habits, and to hopefully avoid that really big surgery of taking the ribs out, taking the neck muscles out, taking the pecs out, which can obviously create a lot of imbalance in your body. Um, so mindset, and then I'm going to talk to you about a phrenectomy, which is a tongue tie. Um, so I'm going to talk about that in just a second. But mindset, just like I said in the last video, the more you are stuck in that negative mindset, the more your brain is telling you that you're going to be stuck in this body just like this permanently. And it's important to not become the victim of this condition. And I'm sure you've noticed I say the TOS. I don't say my TOS. I don't want it. I've never wanted it. It just happened. And whether it was from the car accident that I was in and the traumas of my life that have fully just manifested into a physical thing, or it was just something that was gonna happen, when you're stuck in that negative mindset, it makes it so much harder. So if your mind is depressed, your body becomes depressed, right? And it's all connected. So when you start to move through some of the trauma, some of the emotions that you have, and you disconnect from associating with that thing, I am, or I have, 
my TOS. I have ADHD. It doesn't mean I am ADHD. My options might be, but I'm not, right? And so when you disassociate, it creates a little bit of a barrier of saying, I can get past this, you know? And the only reason, honestly, I even say anything about TOS anymore is because I want to help you guys. I want to make sure that you have someone that you know has gone through this as well, has worked their ass off, sorry, uh, to get to a place, <laughs> there's Lenny again, um, of health and healing. And you have to get out of that victim mentality of nothing's going to change. And it's not going to change if you're not willing to change. You must truly want this. You must need this in your entire being to get through it. So mindset is huge. Um, and you know, something small that you can do today from today on is get yourself a journal and write down three things that you're grateful for. And maybe it's something as simple as I'm grateful. The sky is blue today. I'm grateful. My cat didn't bite me. I am grateful that I have a loving family, right? And then the longer you do it, the more you can start to go deeper. I am so grateful for the person that smiled at me at the store, right? And when you begin to reflect on those things that you're grateful for, like go back and read them, because when you reflect on them, you become happy and you smile and then you sit up a little taller and you just get yourself into a much better headspace. And there is a lot of scientific research all around mindfulness, all around gratitude and how it truly rewires your brain. So I encourage you to do some research on your own and find some of those studies to understand why that this is a huge healing modality. So change your mindset, you guys. It, it's the biggest thing. And if you ever are like, I don't know how to change my mindset, well, just reach out to me and I will tell you something silly and make you smile. And that's a start. Um, okay, really quickly, I will talk about a phrenectomy and how that has basically changed my life. I know, dramatic. I know, I know. Um, but it's kind of true. So a phrenectomy is when you have a tongue tie. So there's a little piece of flesh underneath of your tongue that literally is holding your tongue to the roof or the base of your mouth. And it can have varying degrees. Um, typically, this is something that is found in infants where they're not latching to their mother and they can't nurse or they're not able to sleep very well or breathe very well. Um, and they cry and obviously a baby can't tell you what's going on. But when they find it in an infant, the literally the the tip of their tongue is like secured down. So again, I'm 33. I had heard of this, but I'd never once thought of it. And then um, there was this woman, Margaret, on Instagram that I follow and she is amazing. Go follow her. I'll, I'll try to link her below as well. But she documented her entire adult phrenectomy or tongue tie release journey. And just from a, for even like learning about it from her, I ran to a mirror and I lifted my tongue and I was like, I have a tongue tie. And what I learned was, and again, you can do your own research. You can find way more stuff than I did. I had this like really deep, intense, intuitive knowing that this is what I needed. Um, cause I didn't want that big surgery. So I was like, this is minor. What if this is what's going to help really get me to that next level? And it did. Um, spoiler alert. Uh, so anyways, uh, let me think real quick. So I went and looked and I had it. And what I learned was that if your tongue is not doing its job. Now your tongue is like here to like way down here. Like it's a really long muscle. It's a muscle, you guys. We gotta work a muscle, <laughs> right? Just like every other muscle in the body. And so if that muscle is not working, it's recruiting everyone around it to do its job. So my neck muscles, my pec muscles, my cheek muscles, you guys, I was swallowing liquids with my cheeks, not my tongue. <laughs> So I had all of this tension and I bet if you look at my older videos, you can probably even see how much more relaxed my face and my neck are. And I will put a little picture. I'll try my best to put a picture of the side by side. Before I had my phrenectomy, uh, 48 hours after and where I'm at now of my neck extension. So think of it as like, I could literally only lift my chin about here before I had it. And now I can lift it. And I want you guys to just notice there's no tension unless I'm talking in these neck muscles. And these guys were like always bulging out 
like trying to escape my body because they were so tight. And so now that I've had that phrenectomy, my tongue is free to do its thing, which is also a funny thing because it's like I'm relearning how to speak and relearning how to swallow liquids and food and all of that. But I have so much relief and it almost feels like my neck is longer. My traps are looser. And since having this done, you guys, I can say 100% I knew this was right and I am only going to continue to get better, which is amazing. And I'm so glad that I could have a tiny procedure like this versus having ribs removed and neck muscles removed because you kind of need them, right? And those of you that don't have them, you're still functioning. I don't know how you do it, but you go, right? You guys are superhuman. So that's kind of where I'm at now. Um, it's an ever evolving journey and I am not cured. I don't know if you can be cured, but I'm definitely to a spot where I'm almost pain free. I don't have to think about having this condition. And the only reason it really is coming to my mind is like, oh, I should record a little video to let these guys know. Um, so if you notice that, you know, things are lacking in the video area, it's because sometimes I just want to completely get away from being this person, um, a person who has TOS and has chronic pain, um, because you know, it's not a good spot to be in. So I will say I do have some stuff for you guys coming up. I have not recorded a yoga video for you guys in probably almost a year. Everything you're seeing is all stuff that has been pre-recorded. And, um, I've just had a lot to reflect on over the last year. And so I'm going to be making a lot more videos that are way slower for you that are definitely going to have less arm work in them. Um, you know, they'll probably only be like 15 to 20 minute classes. And some of them will just be focusing on how can I stretch my neck and my shoulders and my upper body to get relief there first. And then we're going to slowly progress to where you guys can start to do like a full yoga class. Um, so if you're using any of the old yoga classes, they're still great. And there's going to be a lot of stuff you can do. But don't ever feel like you must do it exactly as I can because we're in different spots. Our bodies are different. And so when I was doing yoga, I would almost never put my arms above my head. I would bring them down here in prayer or find a way that I can keep my arms lower than my shoulders. That way I don't cause any compression. So anyways, I'm going to be recording um, several more very soon and getting those out for you guys just because I want you to have something that you can do beginning to end and feel confident that you did it and you didn't hurt your body in any way, shape or form. Um, and to just continue your healing journey. Uh, so again, I encourage you to look into the melt method. I encourage you to look into Margaret's tongue tie release story because she also has a bunch of great information linked and other people and resources that she used, um, like myofunctional trainers. Um, so I encourage you to look up her uh, I, and I'll kind of put all this stuff in the description once I'm, once I have this all like fully fleshed out. Um, and then if you guys have questions or just need that extra support, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, I'm really quick to respond most of the time. Um, you can find me again on my Instagram, which is lroberts1121. I also have Catching Waves Yoga. It's catching.waves.yoga um, on Instagram as well. And I will kind of be in both spots. So just if you need that extra support, you need, um, maybe even help finding some other resources or videos to, you know, like massage videos or whatever it might be. I always do my best to make sure that you guys have those uh, in links, but also, you know, when I get to talking to people, I can make it a little bit more one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so yeah, I hope this is inspiring for you guys and Hopefully it won't be as long before I send you another update video, but hopefully my next update video just continues to show that I am only progressing and I am only improving in my health and well-being and, you know, I want it, I really want it to be helpful for you guys. So I will talk to you guys again very soon and I hope you guys enjoy some of the yoga that's already up. Bye!